We want to see the where the real money is. The real money. Where the real money is. You know where the place is? Yeah, we go. We Let's go and see. Wow. So this is where the money is. Exactly. When you talk about uh, climate smart agriculture, since we have uh, diversified into birds, and there is a lot of uh, money in birds, in bird clearing. There is ecotourism, there is breeding, there is a lot of money. How many pairs of peacocks do you have? Uh, right now we have uh, six pairs of peacocks, and a pair goes for 350. Six pairs of peacock mm -hmm. and a pair goes for 320,000 let me convert in dollars that is about uh, 3,000 dollars a pair times six mm. you can't be serious we are serious Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Wow. Yeah, so Mr. AIM, uh -huh. this is our biosafety area. Uh -huh. So you are going to, uh, to put your legs into uh, that water. So this is a very good step. Yeah. You know, disinfection. We leave all our bacteria we here. We leave our bacteria here. So you know the, 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 the shoes carry a lot of bacteria. Sure. Yeah, so for the security of our chickens, mm -hmm. we must... Uh, do the so these are our bags. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, what is this one? Is a this white one? This is a porridge plantain, but we have another one in the, same, in the other side. Wow, and uh, here we are doing turkeys. We have yep. different types of turkeys. Wow, we have the baboon turkey from Zambia and also the local turkeys because that one's so huge. It's so huge, and even it's brown in color, so they're very rare to see them in Kenya. I've never seen a brown turkey, <laughs> even yeah. in school. Uh -huh. I've never we have seen. imported them from Zambia, wow. uh, so we have different types of bats here from different countries. Wow, yes, wow. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. We also have Kanga. Uh, these are guinea fowls. A uh, different species of guinea fowl. We have the white guinea fowl. We also have, have the dotted guinea fowl. In guinea fowl, we have uh, normally we have uh, six species of them, but here we, we only have these species. The white. The white. Uh, the the uh, dotted. White, uh, dotted one and the white chested. Uh -huh. uh, wow. Then we have the fruit. Mm -hmm. You can see your know, the ruffle, the ruffle the last, feathers. The feathers. Yes. We call it uh, flipper, mm -hmm. and we have the uh, uh, the, uh, the flowered one. Yep. They are Swedish flowers from Sweden. Wow. Yeah. They are just beautiful. Let They're me just see. beautiful. They are just colorful, and they lay a lot of eggs. Wow. They attract the uh, visitors so much. Whenever the visitors are come, they ask me about, uh, ah, have you colored the birds? So yeah. this one, this uh, the the daughter chicken. Uh, yeah, it's a bleed. Mm. So we also we got a cock. The yeah. same color. Yeah, we have a cock for the same color. We also have the uh, our uh, Americana. Americana, they are those uh, chicken who lay uh, colored eggs. You can see like the the, 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 the chicken who lay uh, brown eggs, blue eggs, green eggs. We have Americana and a, a Laucana. Wow. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm a poultry expert, by the way, I've also learned this new technique whereby the chicken can be in deep litter, but then you have the feeding trough outside. Yes. That's so amazing to learn from you. But you know, you have to do a lot of research because your birds, yes. their value is another story of another day. So you really and have to check. In, uh, in ornamental of birds, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are not baby feeders, they are normal chickens, and also they are resistant to diseases. Wow. Naturally. We don't have many diseases like chicken, whereby you can find all chicken are dead. Down, are dead down. No, they're, they're resistant to diseases, which means their immunity is a bit high compared to other birds. And they are also not heavy feeders. They eat rest, considered to a normal chicken. So, a question. And they are so profitable. We, really? Because, like for this turkey, mm -hmm. uh, you lay it six months. It gives you allowed five to six kg. And when you're selling a couple, it will allow like eight thousand. Eight six thousand. And the same duration you layer a chicken, 
and you will sell it at a thousand. Or even eight hundred. Eight hundred. And Sakoda can even bargain. You can just compare. <laughs> Are we in business? <laughs> we are in business indeed. This is smart farming, you know. Yeah, exactly. How much is a guinea for? A guinea for like this one, white, mm -hmm. goes for 10k. 10,000? Maturity period is six months. The same as normal chicken. Guys. Lifespan, allowed five years. How many eggs does it lay? <laughs> How many eggs I does it lay? I can't even tell because there are so many eggs. Uh, in a month, it can lay every day, every day. In eight season. So, which means the season goes for three months, which means it's going to give you 90 eggs in a season. And the egg is 250. Compared to a, a chicken egg, a chicken egg goes for 15 bob. Hey. Are we in smart agriculture? I tell you. Mm -hmm. How much is, um, is the, the polka? Let me just call it a polka. Let me give it my the name. Flower one. The flowered one. The flowered one. The flowered one goes for 10,000 per pair. 10,000? 10, 10,000. We want to see the, where the real money is. The real money. Where the real money is. You know where the place is? Yeah, we go. We Let's go and see. Wow. So, this is where the money is. Exactly. When you talk about uh, climate smart agriculture, since we have uh, diversified into birds, and there is a lot of uh, money in birds, in bird clearing. There is ecotourism, there is breeding, there is a lot of money. How many pairs of peacocks do you have? Uh, right now we have uh, six pairs of peacocks, and a pair goes for 350. Six pairs of peacock mm -hmm. and a pair goes for 320,000 let me convert in dollars that is about uh, 3,000 dollars a pair times six mm. you can't be serious we are serious what does it take to like tell us please how did you come up with this whole idea uh, it's all about passion because mm -hmm. farming is a passion and also I started very small I started in a lentil house, whereby I started with one goat, which in was in a, in a lentil house, and the goat was sleeping in a balcon, <laughs> and imagine I was staying in a fast floor, so... Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, you are in, an, in, you are in a flat? I was in a flat. My and friend. you are keeping a goat? A goat in a lentil house. Aye. I was in a, I was living in a first floor, uh -huh. so I was like Gioni, I have to come very early so that I can go and look for my goat. I come with it upstairs up to the bathroom. And then in the morning, we go down the stairs to somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even imagine. Sometimes it was very cold on, uh, during the night. I have to look for a blanket mm -hmm. and then to go and cover my boat. Because it was making a lot of noise. People come from far. People come from far and never remit yourself. From a goat <laughs> in a flat to owning your own farm with the most expensive bird. And I'm telling you, my, my story is very unique uh, compared to other stories that you have never had. Because uh, after that, I found somewhere to, to go and hide my goat. A friend told me, told me that he's going to keep the goat for me. But later, because you have passion, you cannot hide your passion. <laughs> I came with uh, 15 uh, chickens mm -hmm. from the market. And the, the amazing story of that, I don't have somewhere to keep the chickens. Again, so on the uh, during the day they are on the balcony. My goodness. On night, in my kitchen. When we woke up early, mm -hmm. everything is messed up in the kitchen. <laughs> Until I, I, I did a, a, a small house in a balcony now, and I started layering my my chickens there. You know, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can oversleep, <laughs> and the chicken are in the kitchen. You find all the food finished it's messed up and the fridge the what the sink and you know these are open kitchen so they poop on the seats they poop you can imagine <laughs> and then i proceeded 
I started selling one tray of egg in a day in a balcony and I was also eating the chicken from my house and then I started uh, uh, thinking about incubator and I met one of the big supplier in the country in the country uh, they call themselves uh, and they supplied me with uh, 528 eggs in incubator that was costing around 75,000 in a balcony when they came uh, to bring the incubator uh, they thought that uh, I don't have somewhere to put the incubator so they was like we are going back with the incubator oh my goodness oh my goodness so I, I, I had to buy some sheets and to prepare a, a house to put the incubator now I have bought the eggs from Carlo to hatch to hatch with the incubator in the flat in the balcony now uh, already there are 21 days I have got 350 chicks. Where's the brooder? My goodness. One bedroom must be the brooder. My goodness. And that's what happened. And I was selling chicks. After every one month, I was selling like 400, 350 to 400 chicks. But now the story was, I have to market them online because I can't allow anybody to come to look for the chicks. Uh -huh. So if you are in Nyandala, I have to come there. A matatu with my ticks in my box. Nyandaro. Nyandaro. And I was making a lot of money until when we bought this lad and it was like a expansion. So from the sales of chicken yes. to purchase of land. Exactly. Guys, I always tell you there's money in poultry farming and some people are just like, no, it can't, no, it can't. The testimony is here yes. from a goat. To chicken. <laughs> <laughs> now she's keeping the most expensive bird. Yeah. She's meeting people. You are the governor. Uh, exactly. The governor, you are with the the, the senator, I think. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Yes. I want to see how you ended up pick in peacocks. Yeah, the peacock are most expensive bird, and of course they are most attractive birds. And in Nakuru show the other day, yesterday, or the other day. Just the other day. It was yeah, Friday. We got the, the biggest uh, trophy uh, for the best uh, peacock in Nakuru ESK show. And also, not only that, the best, uh, uh, the, the smallest chicken in the world from China. Wow. The name by Selama. <laughs> and that tells you there is a lot in these birds. Like, um, I want to understand something. <laughs> Why did you just decide to go for the ornamental buds? Because you know, these buds, yeah. you know they're very expensive. Exactly. And it's not only expensive, mm -hmm. but it's very difficult to get them. Mm -hmm. Like, huh. You have peacocks? Yes. I once tried getting a peacock mm -hmm. and I gave up. Mm -hmm. You have the silky bantams i don't know just to name it you'll show us how do you get there how did you get these birds uh, what motivated me to do birds uh after corona came i have given you a small story about my journey and then uh before corona i had a lot of uh, so what i did i went into the google google is for free and mm -hmm. i always tell people you should uh, use it yourself well. on how to use google well well uh -huh. use the internet just well see google there and just you just ignore. You know. so i went into the google and i googled uh, the unique agribusiness opportunities in kenya mm -hmm. and then there is ornamental birds there is mushroom there is snail farming and there is a uh, fish farming and you know i started all of them Except snail. I started all of them. This house that you have uh, seen on the gate on the right side, I was doing mushroom. And I was given even contract by Jamaat Market for two years. Wow. Yes. So when you see, I, I just started with uh, two silk and two turkeys. And because people used to come here looking for chickens, so it was like, oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? And that is what motivated me. Many people asked for it. Can you sell for me? Can you train me on how to rear? To and next to that, I started even training farmers in a tent. Wow. 
and that was a, a, a very uh, impressive thing because uh, to see like people they want to know what you're doing you are motivating them even they are giving you a challenge train us so it's like oh, I'll, do, I'll do, go for this and that is how I started with birds so let me ask you ask me does one need any permits to keep some of these birds exactly mm -hmm. when you do want to do birds you first of all uh, visit the KWS near your place uh, they advise you on how to do your cages because ornamental birds must be caged uh, to avoid the uh, crossbreeding, that is one, and mortality. Because uh, so, some of them are so small, some of them are A big, big mm -hmm. so you cannot just mix them like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to the nearest KWS, they advise you on how to do your cages, and then they give you the permit, and then from there you are good. And the permit is not so expensive. Mm -hmm. Some people sometimes amaze me because they fear KWS, but you, there is even a permit of 1,500. Mm -hmm. For example, for this farm, and with all the bags that we have, I pay a, a permit uh, goes for 4,500 in mm. a year. So here you have, uh, so most of the birds that will require uh, you to have a permit yes. are like, uh, let's say the guinea falls? The guinea falls, and then we have peasant, peasant? and the peacocks. So those three? For the rest, and also there is uh, ostrich, there is tortoise, all those. But for last year, which requires permits, just the guinea falls, the, the peasant, and the peacocks. So then how did you get your... Your first uh, flock of, 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 of peacock. peacocks? Uh, the first flock of peacock I got it from somebody in Mobasa and uh, I visited the KWS and then they connected me with the person who was uh, doing uh, the birds in Mobasa and he wanted to locate to, 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 to Yulo. Mm -hmm. So he was selling the bleed and then I was lucky I got my first uh, flock. Yeah, my bleed. So have they started laying yet? Yeah, yeah we are expecting them on. Uh, October. Wow. Yeah, so I'm counting some days. Hey, hey. If a peacock goes for $3,000, I know it can lay up to maybe say 20 eggs? No, no, no. It just say lay a, a 8 to 12 eggs in a span of one year. And there are three pairs. Is it three or four? There are six. Six pairs. Oh, yeah. I don't talk about, I don't talk much about that. You really a motivation. Yeah. What has been your biggest challenge? Uh, the big challenge, as we can even advise our viewers and farmers who want to follow us, uh, the challenge goes whereby you just start farming and you don't know what to feed the birds. Because when you want to start a pot or any other animal farming, you have to do your calculation well. First of all, understand the the animal. Uh, what it takes like for the peacock the the, the, the feed on uh, cereals that is maize uh, grains all those things dengu muele those are the the food for the feeds for the peacock so you have to understand your animal what are the feeds and where to get the feeds and do you have money to feed them mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you cannot just keep the animal today here mm -hmm. and tomorrow you say there is no money and you see the price of feed hike every day, every morning. They will die. So you have to do your calculation, have at least uh, money to manage you until then you, you start selling. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that tells you you have to, to have an alternative source of income. Source of income. Like, what's your, okay, what was your alternative source of income? Okay, so do you, do you only do uh, farming or there's something else you do? Uh, before I started farming, I was uh, doing a lot of uh, businesses and I also do, even at this time. I was a big supplier in Naivasha of uniforms, uh, that is both school and staff uniforms. And then uh, I found that I have a passion. So that tells you that you need something to do so that when this business does not bring money <coughs> at mm -hmm. that particular time, there's something that you have us as a backup. Sure. Yeah. So you have uh, a uniform and uh, tailoring and embroidery exactly. line? Exactly. I have a uniform shop in Naivasha town. Uh, we are doing uh, both school and staff uniform by the name Victor's Uniform. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if one wants to get a uh, uniform for his company, yeah, for uniform the shamba, for the Shamba, shamba with logos, mm -hmm. you're the right person again. Yeah. Well. Uh, maybe I'll ask you this. How does your day look like? 
how does your day look like? You know, you must be a very busy person. At the yeah. same time, you know, tell us just how you're doing. Yeah, I'm a very busy person, but you should also know on how to manage yourself. Like for the birds, they're in my mind, they're in my, my heart. Even uh, how busy I am, I have to come here and see my birds. Because for the birds, you have to see the behavior. Yeah, and for the cleaning, we clean every day. So we are, I'm a very busy person, but I manage it because it's something that is in me. You see, like passion, you cannot go tired. Every time, even when I come back early in the evening, I have come to come and check for them. I'm so speechless. With the commitment and the passion and the consistency you have, this is just such an encouragement. I remember you mentioned that you do uh, climate smart agriculture. Exactly. When you keep your your chicken after um, four four weeks four months you already see them lay you hatch and sell mm -hmm. you make more money within a short period without depending on the yeah. climate actually we are dividing farmers to diversify one reason being uh, relying on the climate is not sure bad at this time as we know them the climate change but when you diversify it into farming like this this is 100% sure because we don't rely on the climate to feed chicken. So it's just a calculation and being smart. And you have your chums. <laughs> exactly. At the end of the day. Wow. <laughs> if someone. Okay. A good question mm. for my viewers and my followers. Mm. If someone wanted to buy a bird, let's say he'll be impressed by this and this. Mm. Are there birds for sale? Yeah, yeah. We actually sell. And we are recruiting more farmers to venture into this uh, uh, bird farming as an alternative way to the climate change also. So we have uh, breeds for sale. Can you sell outside Kenya? We can sell even outside Kenya. Uh, we just need to do the proper arrangement. We know the wildlife from there and they give us permit to, to, ex to uh, export the bird. Wow. So you not only keep birds. We not in only keep birds, but I also sell the birds. You also sell the birds. Yeah, please. So, Charis Farm. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. As much as you are congratulated in the shows, you have a congratulatory from AIM Agriculture. Thank you so much. If I tell you you're doing well, yeah. you are doing well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Maybe you could now take us to the next big thing. Yeah. Guys, follow us on. Watch the next video, you'll see what she's doing again. Yeah.